Mike Sheen, thanks very much for your time. Now, the tables have turned a little bit. You're going to be answering the questions instead of asking them. I've got no doubt you have been a D for life. When did your Melbourne supporter fandom come to life? Well, I was actually born into a Melbourne family. My parents were very, very passionate Melbourne supporters. Uh, and so I grew up in that family. I was one of four boys and three of us were Melbourne supporters and the eldest one, for some obscure reason, uh, buried for Carlton. So it goes back that far. There's been a few distractions along the way. Um, and, and, and certainly when I was working in the media, I thought it was important to be seen to be neutral. So I was sort of not an active Melbourne supporter for you know the best part of 50 years while I was working in the media because I just think journos have enough problems with their credibility without being seen to be aligned to a particular footy club. Was it hard detaching yourself a little bit and not being biased when clearly you were Melbourne deep down? Yeah it was but I mean I grew I grew into that I grew into sort of um, parking the football allegiance and, and and to be to be honest I've always been I think primarily a lover of the game and then with the, the the preference for a footy club or not secondary because that sounds like it wasn't important but i sort of when i was a kid i knew the numbers of every player at every club it wasn't just melbourne you know and i was interested in the scores of every game that was played so i had this broad interest even as a kid when you were growing up melbourne were quite successful a bit different to kids these days do you have memories of those finals and premierships back then well, I'm sad to say that I do actually remember 64 because I was there. So that's how old I am. I was 17 in 64. I went with um, a mate of mine who was a Collingwood supporter. Uh, and we sat up on the top deck of the Northern Stand. Uh, and, you know, everyone knows what the ultimate result was then. And oddly, um, well, there was 64, five years later, I was playing football under Neil Crompton at Werribee. He was the captain coach of Werribee in the VFA, and I was playing. So that was a big, uh, that was a big thrill. Amazing. It's been a, obviously a long time since then. Does that make you appreciate it more now, given there's been so much heartache in between? No doubt. And, and the, the, the day that exemplified that was the, um, the last round in 1987. And I, mean, I think that's still my favourite round of football that I've ever watched in you know, all those years. I mean, it was, I was at the, uh, the Western Oval, it was, as it was called then, uh, and we were playing the Bulldogs for a place in the, uh, I think it was the final five then, final five. And, you know, we had to win and we also were relying on results elsewhere. Um, and when that came through, when Melbourne came from behind to beat the Bulldogs and then Hawthorne beat Geelong at Geelong, that sort of um, uh, precipitated Melbourne's climb into the, the five. Uh, and, you know, that was a massive day. I mean, the Melbourne supporters, there were 30,000 people at the Western Oval that day, and I suspect it was equally split, maybe even a few more Melbourne supporters than the Bulldogs, and there was an unleashing of, you know, emotion and joy and pride because that was the first time since 64, 23 years earlier, that we'd made the finals. How does this team now rank compared to all the teams you've seen over the past 50-odd years? This is the best team, clearly. Um, uh, I think there's, I can't see any holes in this team. And it's got a brilliant Ruckman, the best Ruckman in the comp. Uh, the midfield's as good as any, probably uh, superior to any other uh, in the comp. Um, tall forwards, great defence, and their cohesion's perfect. And, and I love the way the confidence that they've got and, the, and the, the unity that they have on the field. So no, there's no doubt in my mind that um, this is the best team. There are some real star players, obviously five All-Australians this year. You were known for doing a top 50 for yep, a long I was. Of time. And for a long period of time, there probably weren't a lot of Melbourne players in that top 50. Now that you're seeing these boys a part of it, is, is that the reason for success, the, the star factor? In my mind, it is. There's, there's um, divided views on this. I've always thought that... If your top six play well, I don't care who your bottom six is. Other people say the strength of the team is determined by the bottom six. I don't agree with that. I think in the in the uh, the final against um, uh, Port Adelaide against Geelong, when if we can have Gorn, Petraka, 
Oliver, Salem and Viney as the best five players again, we win. No doubt in my mind. I like the sound of that. Bulldogs <laughs> obviously have a dangerous midfield. That's probably going to be the real key battle. They've got, they've got the Bonton Pallies, McRae, Liberatore. Yep. They'll probably match it. Do you feel like that's the key in the game? Yeah, I do. And I think Gorn's the best ruckman in the game. And I think the depth of our midfield is probably a bit stronger than the Bulldogs. Notwithstanding, I'm a huge fan of, of uh, Bonton Pelly and McRae and, and Liberatore. He's just so important in their engine room. But I think we, we bet a bit deeper than they do. You're sitting in front of a background of the MCG there. Unfortunately, yeah. it won't be at the G next weekend. But what has it been like for you sitting on the couch, watching the footy, no doubt still enjoying the wins? Well, look, I actually... I'm not sure if I'm in the majority or the minority. I think it's the minority. I like watching the football at home by myself. And so I, to me, it's like watching something in the theatre. You need to concentrate. You don't want distractions. And you certainly don't want to be drinking alcohol while you're doing it. Um, so because I think I'm a student of the game, that's where I can study it best. If there's a major incident, I can see it replayed a dozen times. We get all the stats. Uh, so... I'm not particularly unhappy that I'm not in Perth. I suspect I will be when the final siren goes and we're in front. That's when I would like to be there. But in the purpose of watching the footy, um, I'm, I'm happy at home. No doubt through your time, you would have spoken and interviewed many Melbourne players. Are there any that stand out for you? Uh, not anyone that stands out. I mean, I had my heroes when I was a kid. Like you won't remember these, certainly you won't remember them. But in, in 64, I mean, people like Hassaman and Tony Anderson uh, and Johnny Townsend, they were heroes of mine because I was just a kid, you know, who loved his footy watching his team play. Um, more recently, I've always, I've always had a good relationship with, with Gary Lyon. Um, I did an interview with David Schwartz uh, in Open Mic, which I loved, but how honest he was and how colourful his story he was. Um, and Robbie Flowers sort of, my all-time favourite Melbourne player and bloke. I mean, he's a brilliant individual on and off the field. So uh, they were the, they're probably my um, half dozen favourites. You might not be a kid with a hero anymore, but no doubt a big kid still on the inside. Do you have a favourite player to watch at the moment? Uh, yeah, well, I, look, I can uh, boast here, Ben. You talked about the top 50 before. I was on SEN with, um, with Gary and Tim. That's at least four years ago. And they wanted me to do a top 50, even though Mark Robinson was doing it in the Herald Sun and I was, I was no longer in the paper. So I did the 50. It might be five years ago, whatever. It was a long time ago. And my number 50 was a kid called Christian Petraka. And I just had this, I mean, everyone knows he was born to be a good player, but he wasn't then. He'd just shown flashes of it. And I was just so keen on him as a player and still am. And the other guy who I've got massive, admiration for is Clayton Oliver and he was a slow burn for me because I thought he lacked a bit of finesse he wasn't as polished as some of the others but his ability to get the footy and his hands are brilliant those two you want me to go through another 12 of them go through them <laughs> we, we want to hear them all I know Gorney Gorney is the you know the, the supreme ruckman in the competition um Stephen May over, has overcome a bad first year I mean I wasn't mad keen on Jake Lever early on I mean, uh, he, he didn't have to win me over, but I was sort of reluctant to embrace him. Um, but I have. Uh, um, Langdon, they're all over the place. Salem, I love the way he uses the footy. Um, I was always keen for Ben Brown to play this year. I thought that if we can get him in and get some confidence in him, that he would be perfect in front of goal. Um, and I like Tom McDonald. Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I like them all, aren't I? But yeah. I do like Tommy. I think when Tommy's on, it makes us a much better team. You're a storyteller. Do you like seeing the likes of Charlie Spargo or Alex Neil Bullen, who probably had tougher backgrounds yep, work their way? Good call. Yeah, I do. And, and I've got to be honest, I was, um, wasn't was mad keen on Charlie early on. I thought he was too small and didn't kick the ball far enough. But he's a smart player. And what he does with the footy in his hands is he uses it. Um, he doesn't need that many opportunities to either find a teammate or kick a goal. So uh, he's another one that's won me over. You spoke about the top six players in a side being the most important, but the role players in this 22 at the moment, is, is that where you think that can really set us apart from other teams, not only on the weekend, but for years to come? 
Um, maybe it helps, but I'm still I'm totally committed to that philosophy that if your best players play well and you're a talented team, which Melbourne is, if they play well, you win because they just have such a big impact on the game. That's good enough for me. I'm convinced. It's been great chatting, Mike. Really appreciate your time and hopefully we've got a win to celebrate on Saturday. Well, I hope your team win, Ben. Your team wins, Ben.